I say, is this artwork over here from a photograph? Yes. <sighs> Get this out of my sight. <laughs> uh, chew. As a realist or really anybody who works in representational art, you've been asked this question before. For some reason, there's a taboo that surrounds working from photographs, and in this video I want to try to address it. Every artist has a different stance on this subject, and instead of trying to talk on behalf of other artists, I'm just going to share how I work from photographs and why. Now, before I start, I just want to fill you in on what I'm doing in this painting, because I'll be referencing it throughout the video. At the beginning of my day, I took some time to draw and plan out what I'm going to try to accomplish for the day. As I show you this clip of me planning out my painting for the day, you'll notice I'm paying pretty close attention to my reference photo. To summarize how I see the camera and photos, I think it's a bit silly that there's so much taboo surrounding them, and I see them as a tool. Like any tool, the effects that they have on the process and the product really comes down to the way that they're used. For some reason, you're not supposed to show anyone your reference photos, but I'm not going to do that. So here are my reference photos, and here's my drawing. Ideally, I'd sketch on site, plan out my composition there, and take a couple photographs to try to capture the details and textures I'll need for my final painting. Unfortunately, usually the things I want to paint, I experience them in passing, and the best I can do is a quick iPhone photo. Specifically for this landscape, I couldn't stick around to sketch because I wasn't sure if I was trespassing, and there was very clearly a car tailing us while we were walking around. So I snapped a couple quick photos and ran away as fast as I could. Cameras have the capacity to capture an immense amount of detail in a very short period of time. But they're a bit of a double-edged sword when you're trying to make art. And the reason I say this is, unless you're a really good photographer who spends a lot of time finding the perfect position for the camera and setting up the focal distance and a bunch of other camera stuff I don't understand, the details that the camera captures aren't going to be organized or composed. For some people, this isn't a big deal, but for me it is. Reality by nature is chaotic, and I'm not trying to make a painting that reflects that. When I paint, I'm generally trying to highlight something I find important. You can see when looking at the drawing I made for this painting that I changed the perspective a bit and I moved some stuff around to better highlight certain details that I thought were important for the narrative of this painting. I've observed that if I follow a photograph too closely and don't take time to plan out the composition, I usually make something that looks pretty interesting but it really doesn't have any meaning to it. The thing is, inherently that's not a problem with the camera, that's a problem with me. And I found that if I take the time to draw and plan out my composition, it doesn't matter if I'm drawing on site or if I'm working from a photograph. If the things you find important in art aren't affected by you working from a camera, and you can be able to expand your art practice from using a camera, I see no reason not to use a camera. The flip side of that is, if you're a realist and you're really adamant about capturing an object as it exists in space without the mediation of technology, then it's probably important for you not to work from a photograph. Different artists find different things important, and I'm not going to say that artists who despise working from photographs are wrong. I don't advocate that artists should blindly follow their reference photos, but I think that it's perfectly fine for an artist to take a photo as a reference. Working from photographs has allowed me to address a much wider range of subjects such as this vacant lot in the middle of Philadelphia filled with trash where, for a lot of practical reasons, I couldn't stick around for an afternoon and sketch it out. I still enjoy making art in conventional spaces like parks and nature preserves, but as an artist, I want to make art that reflects the reality I experience. And the reality I experience isn't in a park or a nature preserve, the reality I experience is here. 